Hey there everybody, Milk Knight here, and welcome to the next part of Resident Evil 7, where we're going to be continuing on in the uh, ship section. We switched over to Mia uh, last time, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, we ended up switching over to Mia, and I ended up... Um, getting some corrosive I think and uh, yeah yeah we came back to this room didn't we bomb, I'll definitely be taking one of those. Definitely going to be something in here. Save points, remember this area. I've got to use the corrosive here. That way it fucks with the lock. Oh yeah, I remember this section here. When we were doing the VHS, we came through here, I think. Definitely going to be something poking. I can, sm I can sense something around this corner. Hold it. 
Oh god, is that a vomiter? It is. Two remote bombs was all that was needed to take it out. Good thing we had them. And <laughs> there was one here too. <laughs> Pretty convenient. Of again. Anyway, what is this that we're dealing with? Power cable, now we can use this for. Oh, there was a certain panel that needed it, if I remember correctly. Looks like there's nothing else here. So we've got a power cable. Um, I think we need a fuse as well. Can I use the corrosive here? Nope. I guess I need a key specifically for that. I guess there's not enough corrosive to melt through the lock.
I'm guessing I just picked up Ken or something. There we go. And then we have the key. Remote bombs, they're useful. Interesting place to put chem fluid. Sixteen years since the nightmare of Raccoon City, survivors are still suffering. Sixteen years. Almost missed that. Ah, I see. We're supposed to mirror uh, the same picture on either side. It's pretty... There we go. Free corrosives, not bad at all.
We can put the power cable here now, can't we? Uh, we need the fuse now. Key. Or rather the wrong lock, I should say. We check the map a minute. Fourth floor. How did I get to the fourth floor now? I've actually forgotten. I feel like it might have been through the second floor somehow. Can we go any lower? Come on, dickhead, where are you?
I don't think I got to explore much of the first floor because we were running a lot. Still alive. I guess it depended on where I shot it. Dear Janet, hey, how's it going? I guess half a year or so have passed by the time you get this letter. Life is so boring here, day after day, same old sea. Although there's one thing that's different this time, we have some passengers sailing with us, which hardly ever happens. It's a couple with a little girl, I think they're distant relatives of the captain. Imagine travelling on a tanker instead of a passenger ship, and it must be hard up. I tried talking to the little girl, and her dad shot me this nasty look. What's he so worried about? Now that I think about it, the captain said he didn't even have any relatives. Maybe I'm overthinking this. I miss you. Love, Jim. Climb up. This will take me to the fourth floor. So it's through here then. We're on track now. Now I know where the cabins, uh, the cabin will be.
got a present for you. Never got something with a bit more teeth to it. I need to find the fuse. And I have no clue where it could be. Ship fuse, where could it be? It is in the box then. I need the key for the box then in that case. Not too sure, there's nothing saying online where to go. I guess we'll head back the way we can.
Yeah, this is the box we need. Yeah, it's the key to the orange box. Let me see. I feel like I've got most of this done. It's just getting the key for the box that I'm struggling with. I've done the lounge painting. And I've got the power cable. Hold on. Surely the lock pick can't be used on that. Oh. It's for the antique coin. Okay, it's not for the fuse then. <laughs> okay then, whatever. So that's, that's the, the question where the... Earth is the fuse then. Yeah, I got the fat molder cord. That's the bit that I've got. Here we go. F1, it's on floor one. Oh, it's what we placed, okay. 
I get it now. I can't remember if we placed that fuse in the VHS tape or not. Or if we placed it earlier. But yeah, it's floor one then. So sometimes I need to push in the right direction because my memory isn't the best sometimes. perfectly okay because we can just use the elevator to get back up. Hmm. There we are. It's because I wasn't looking at the spot particularly. Okay, now we can do that. That's all I was overlooking. <laughs> Hold on, I've got to use the elevator again. I need to go down to a different floor. Sub level two. He's waiting. This looks like a boss room.
Yeah, maybe not a boss room. of time. Get him out of there. Ethan. Ethan. Hey, shh, shh, shh. I know, I know, I know. I'm not gonna hurt you. Hey, I never would have if I could have helped you. But what do you mean? I'm no killer, son. Neither is Marguerite. Nor my boy Lucas. Or even Zoe here. She did this. What the hell is she? Now, what did she do to you? She infected us with her gift. That's what she calls it. I found her in a busted out tank in the bayou. Everything changed after that. So she infects you and then she takes control? No. Not exactly, son. She just... She forces her way into your mind, your soul. You can't fight back. You are connected to her, and you can't resist the urge to... Oh, you're a, you're a different person after that. Just like Mia. So Mia sent me that message because of Evelyn. Listen, the, the girl just lost a family of her own. She's the key. All right? You find her, you stop her. Ethan. Free my family. Please. Quite a powerful saying. I like that. Stay away from him. Why? He doesn't love me. I can make him love me. Don't. Don't hurt him. Zoe, I told you I'm not going to hurt him. Don't be there. So what? <laughs> You're not my mom. Remember? There's no 
time. You have to get out of here and find her. Here, take this. What? Uh, wait, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Saving your life. You need to go. I won't be able to resist for much longer. No. Now go kill that little bitch. No. No. Mia! No! All we have is a sample. Okay, you little bitch. What the fuck are you? It's all your fault. How nice. Dead fish. Lots of dead fish. There's a collapse in the Patterson mine. Tuan and Beckford are dead. And Huxley will never walk on his own again. Old man Stan was right. The ground there is too unstable. The company's not going to send us any replacements. They want us to work double shifts instead. Can't wait to get back to the old co Have a crumpy salt mine. Are they watching us from that helicopter? Alpha One, this is Bravo One. Do you read? This is Alpha One. Report. Did you find anything? A thorough search of the Baker property revealed zero survivors. Repeat, zero survivors. We did find evidence of a skirmish. Evelyn? Negative. However, we did find several encrypted messages from the Baker's son, Lucas, <coughs> to an unknown third party. You can probably guess who that was. That's just great. We've had reports using the abandoned mine south of the property. I'm gonna go have a look. Roger that. We'll meet you at those coordinates. If you encounter Evelyn, orders are shoot to kill. Repeat, shoot to kill. Yeah, they weren't fucking around. You've taken Mia's things. Oh, okay.
as I use them on this whilst I can. I think we'll get a quick save in as well since we've actually advanced. Hold on, how come I can't equip those? Hold on, has it got to be in the D-pad section? annoying. That means I won't be able to use the shotgun. Well, it's not like I had these spare shells anyway. Anything else around here that I've missed? Yeah, it's a good thing I checked. I don't really want to go in with anything... Like, I want to go in with plenty of ammo. <laughs> Chances are, I've got a feeling we'll be exploring and fighting quite a few things down there. Pretty interesting location. It's giving me vibes of the Antarctic base a little bit. Whoa, I guess Lucas is here.
No. Learned my lesson last time. Okay, that was stupid of me. I didn't slow down. I definitely could have handled that better.
This place is wild. Thanks to you guys, it's been a better week since my head's been clear and back to normal and she still thinks she's got me. You guys really need to work on fixing that. Not only does she look like a little kid, but she's about as stupid as one too. Mum and Dad are still totally under though. I was wondering if this whole family obsession something you guys programmed into her. It's kind of fucked up. This bit... That bitch mirror is still somewhere between... Somewhere in between Evie, La La Land. In reality, she she gets pretty violent, so I locked it up in a cell. I thought maybe Evelyn would get mad since Mia's her favourite and all. She doesn't seem to care. She actually goes and visits her sometimes. She thinks Mia's her mummy. Like I said, your bioweapon is fucked up. Evelyn's family obsession's getting really getting out of hand. She's making everyone kidnap more and more assholes off the streets to add to a freak show of a family. Maybe she's getting tired of me and not coming round, but it's a pain in the ass for me since i got to clean up the mess whenever someone new comes along. report <laughs> five minutes after dose vomiting e ne necrotoxin e dosage test 10 minutes after dose death 12 minutes after dose cell calcification Destroy the cells of any subject based on the E-Series bioweapon model. Use only for the disposal of E-Series assets. The toxins must be stimulated before use. Do this by placing the sample of E-Series cells into the necrotoxin container. Which we've just done. And now we have a serum by the looks of it. E-necrotoxin. Research report. I go. I guess we can't read it. Oh no, we can read it. I have to press the X button on it. <coughs> Missing more law. Project was instigated in 2000 as one of the several concepts of the company's next bass, next generation experiment battlefield superiority initiative. Working with technical assistance from the HCF to develop a bioweapon for neutralizing combatants en masse with minimal direct contact. Next Bass was later folded and all of its assets diverted to this project. What makes this project markedly different from conventional weapons is its ability to turn enemy combatants into allies, converting hostile elements into willing servants. Since this effectively eliminates the cost of no, not only POW handling, but also combat itself, it's no wonder we had the, and even the organization, chomping it a bit to get on board. So this is all done by proxy. 
project would never have existed if it were not for the discovery in of the remarkably progressed vicariant evolution fungus that we mainly term mutamycite. Fabrication method for each bioweapon was the was to introduce the mutamycite genome to pre-stage 4 human embryo and perform cultivation in a controlled environment over a period of 38 to 40 weeks. The resultant organisms were referred to as candidate specimens and grand graded based on usability from the impractical and faulty series A through D to perfected E series. A common appearance was selected for the bioweapon and that of a roughly 10 year old girl to ensure the ease of blending in with urban refugee populations. The first E series specimen named Eveline has produced proven to be proven capable of secreting the mutamycite from her tissue at will. It is also of note that Evelyn's mutamycite imposes a profound control of her body and mind when introduced into a host organism. We still have a lot to learn about the mechanism of which Evelyn achieves and maintains this control, but the working theory is that the vector is similar to the autoinducer pheromones used for quorum sensing in the Pseudomonas bacteria. Evelina's control is exerted in a series of discrete stages, the first of which is hallucination. Almost immediately after infection, the subject begins to see images of Eveline, though she is not in fact there, and even hear her voice, which is inaudible to anyone else. Auditions with infected subjects throughout the stage of infection revealed that at first, the phantom Eveline appears to be a normal young girl, sometimes desiring companionship or assistance. As time progresses, she begins making more and more extreme demands, including self-mutilation and attacks on other people. The psychological shock that this induces helps to break down the mind's natural barriers to Eveline's brainwashing effect. By the time mental control is achieved, the mutamycite infection has progressed throughout the body's cells, so the body, and then there's nothing else after that. Some stuff is censored out. Eveline's functions also include the ability to form organisms from the mycelia, the fungal filament. The term organism is loosely based, loose, used loosely here, strictly speaking. They are superorganisms formed of a countless mycelia. What's important though is that they exhibit a strong survival instinct and will defend themselves ferociously with the slightest provocation. Their fungal toughness and remarkable strength give them significant battlefield potential. The researchers have been calling these superorganisms the molded, made of mold, and also molded as in shape. The name has a certain elegance to it. For the treatment of accidental infections, performing on samples of Eveline's body tissue produces a unique fun fungicidal serum. Administering the serum to an infected subject will cause the mycelia to calcify, but if the subject's cells are already largely invaded, the serum will be fatal. Since the treatment window is so small, the serum's primary use is therefore disposable of infected subjects rather than a cure. In exploring to the serum's potential, we found that subjecting it to would enhance its effect to extreme potency, becoming a compound we know called e-neurotoxin, which, even in tiny amounts, I'm assuming subjecting it to um, stimulant or stimulus would be the word there, possibly. What's been interesting to observe in Eveline's behaviour is her obsession with the concept of family and experiments we found on multiple occasions that infected subjects were compelled to act as her mother or father, treating her as if she was really their daughter. Why did she settle upon family as the theme for her mental control? This is just speculation, but it could be that she instinctively understands that a family unit is better suited to blending into social groups than a lone girl. On the other hand, well, a sentimental sort might suggest that she is making up for the lack of perceived love in her quarantine upbringing. A parent's love. Makes sense. It's a very uh, clever way of manipulation. Flying rounds. I'm assuming there's going to be neuro rounds. Yeah, I have a feeling there's going to be a, a boss fight coming up.
Dora rounds do? Poison that treats the nervous system. Okay. So it's the neurotoxin, but inside of a grenade round, I guess. Okay. We've saved. We'll uh, carry on going forward. So that's what the grenade launcher looks like. Pretty beefy. We're not going to be using it though. Not until there's a boss fight coming up or whatever. You can move items around in your inventory. Okay. Somewhat. You can move. You can remap stuff from the D-pad anyway. I've only just realised that. <laughs> it took me like nearly towards the end of the game to figure that out. Creepy singing. Got time for that. <laughs> shotgun rounds. I don't have the shotgun on me anyway. Should use the enhanced rounds since they do more damage. Oh, I should have used the. Never mind, it's fine. It's probably another chance to find another herb.
Had to use one round. I was kind of in a bind there. Bloody hate those things. Two of them's obnoxious. That's for sure. Anyway, is there any like ammo around here actually? What was that I just killed? It's funny, actually, I looked the name up for it today, and I thought, like, a vomit, like, the term vomiter or spitter would be kind of cool. They are literally called fat molded. I'm not joking. That is literally the name for them. Because of how beefy they are, I guess. I still think vomiter sounds better, but whatever. <laughs> fat molded it is. That's literally the nicknames of those things. Shotgun shells. Yeah, I know, right? I was, like, laughing when I saw the name. I went on the wiki today just to have a look. And it was like, oh, yeah, fat molded. I was like, that's, that's creative. Creative in such a stupid way that it's just funny to me, sort of thing. It's like literal naming, you know, you know what I mean? Fat molded. The ones that crawl around are called Athletic Molded, which I think is even funnier. Then again, I don't really know what else you'd call those. Sporty Molded doesn't quite work, I suppose. Right, time we go up, uh, go to go up the ladder. <coughs> We're playing as Ethan again now, by the way. We played as Mia briefly in her own little section, which is kind of cool. I think what I'm going to do is, for my initial playthrough, I'm going to do the DLCs after I'm done with the uh, this run. And then when I'm probably done with all the DLCs, I'll do a second run to get to the second ending. Which means I'll stream the game again, up to a certain point where we make the decision of who we pick to save. And then I'll like save that one stream where I pick the other option. Because there's no point like going through the game again and saving it as like archive. When I can just play up to that point and then archive from then on. Plus, I'll be able to do things probably a bit faster in that second run, because I'll know what I'm going through then. Because a lot of the puzzles are just the same, so... There's no difference. The other ending isn't canon, by the way, but I'm just curious to see what it's like. Looks like we're going through the mines today. The salt mines, I'm sure it's going to make me very salty. It's, that's grandma's wheelchair, isn't it? And it's the doll that we saw. Um... Actually, is that supposed to be based on Evelyn? I'm assuming it is. Because there was one based on Mia 
the doll. Oh yeah, I was wondering what she was on about when she did this. That way is now open for us, so... E-001. Yeah, yeah, we've come full circle. We've come back to the beginning, pretty much. The difference is that area is now open for us, so... Oh yeah, I remember when we got like power bombed through the wall. That was amazing. And then we had to pick up the axe and fight, which was awesome. Looks like the Necronomicon or something. <laughs> this is your fault. Why am I seeing this? Oh, does that mean we get to watch our uh, hand get cut off again? Please tell me we do. Yeah, we had the screwdriver through the art, through the hand. Creepy doll. I like how I shot it so and it didn't do anything because it's obviously a hallucination. I just wasted a few rounds on like on the air pretty much. I should have realized because the filter's still going. At least it wasn't a grenade round. I would have been salty if it was a grenade round. Yeah, yeah, we're hallucinating right now, apparently. I just realized this theme that's playing is reminiscent of the save room theme. So... It's confusing you. It's a little bit confusing. I'll quickly sum it up. The girl that we're seeing, she's a bioweapon, basically. She's a bioweapon and she can infect people through proxy. The organization that made her basically made her because... They didn't want to do bioweapon handling anymore. You know, like putting hunters in cages and all that shit. Because apparently that stuff is way too cost effective. And who would have thought it that, like, putting giant monsters in cages and shipping them around the world would be, like, a massive resource burner. So the idea of Evelyn is to have her basically infect people by using a proxy. Uh, or proximity of sorts. Which can then cause massive hallucinations. And apparently when uh, you start seeing Evelyn and she gives you orders to do things, that's when your mind has like truly been broken. And then like you basically turn. I 
Oh yeah, the attic. Is there anything up here? I know you can't hurt me. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts. And I love it. Because it's so... It's so out there. It's so ridiculously out there. But it makes sense. Because, like, organizations like Umbrella can't keep... Um, doing the uh, bioweapon spiel the way they were doing it before. In this case, it's very low-key, in a way. Like the exorcist. Oh, I see. I've got a guard against her shockwaves. Come here, brat. Yes, yes, yes. Time to get some sleep. Okay, I was not expecting that. <laughs> what the fuck? So Evelyn was... I did not th expect that to be Evelyn. So Grandma was Evelyn this whole time. Well, yo, yo, this is literally um, Carla, isn't it, from RE6, <laughs> with like the the giant face inside the ship, pretty much. Kill them. Make sure she don't get that close then. Let's keep attacking her instead of her way. Yeah. It's fine. I'll just use the grenade launcher more. I was expecting her to like change forms or something. We got. I'm sorry that I've got to re traumatize everybody again with this. I skip this. No, everyone's got to be traumatized all over again. Yep, basically. I was not expecting that twist. It's always the quiet ones you don't expect. Helicopters. Oh, 
I wonder who that could be. Sounds a little bit familiar. Play time, bro. That is a cool visual, not gonna lie. Took you guys so long. I'm happy now. Ethan? Mia. You made it. I'm glad. Did I? Yeah, we've got the true ending. Because we picked the right choice. They say that when one door closes, another opens. Well, a door closed tonight. And what a long night it was. But not just for yep. me. And plus we got to see Chris, which is awesome. The victims here. So were the bakers. It was that thing, Evelyn. Who made them that way? But now Evelyn's dead. And these guys are here to clean up the mess. No, we didn't. I had just come to terms with losing Mia. But now she's back and wants to start over. Put all this behind us. Maybe this is where the next door opens. Well, so the helicopter had umbrella on it, but a blue version of it. I guess Chris is no longer BSAA. Oh, the ending theme is really good, by the way. I have it on your Spotify, no way. We're not done yet, we've got DLC to do. 
but not tonight. But the rest of the week, I'll probably do the DLC. The base game for Seven, though, I really do like it. Very reminiscent of RE1's remake in a lot of ways. I like it massively. I'd put it up there with RE1's remake, by, by far. In terms of atmosphere and, and lore and storytelling. I definitely put it up there with RE1's remake, definitely. anything after the credits or oh, we've got long credits now I suppose I'll provide my thoughts of the game now but yeah I put it up there with RE1's remake it's it's that good in fact whilst I was playing through this I was getting a lot of like vibes of RE1's remake in a lot of ways um Mainly, it, it just gave me the same feels that I had like when I was in my teens, pretty much. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely smashing the DLC next. <laughs> definitely smashing the DLC. I'll be doing that um, during the week. I'm trying to remember which order you have to go in. I think it's banned footage. My, fr my friend on WhatsApp texted me. My, my friend Mark, he's a big RE fan as well, just like me. Um... He says, go through band footage, 21 bedroom and daughters. It'll flash out some stuff pre RE7. And then he says, do not a hero at the end, which is the Chris Redfield um, DLC. So I've got to do the band footage and the Zoe's DLC. I'll check what the DLC options are in a minute before I leave, but like, I think that's the order it's got to go in. I'll just double check online what the order of the DLC should be, because I don't want to play them out of order. Nightmare, Bedroom, 21, Daughters, Not a Hero, End of Zoe, Jack's 55th birthday and Ethan must die last. They are the last of the bonus games. Don't have any story going on. I'm assuming the other two modes are superfluous modes that you just play through.
People are saying the main game shouldn't be played first, but like I don't believe that. Lots of threads about what order the DLC should be done in. Okay, here we go. Somebody summed it up perfectly. So the band footage tapes, daughters covers, uh, certain points of the story, bedroom nightmare in 21, cover what happened between the derelict house kitchen and birthday uh, room. Not a hero takes place after the main game, naturally, because Chris is in it. And then end of Zoe takes place after not a hero. And then they say that Ethan must die in Jack's 55th birthday and non-canon minigames. So I'll probably do a stream based on them briefly, see how far I can get with them. As well. I mean, th those modes sound a bit superfluous, but I'll do them. I want to get the full experience for Seven. Even the extra little extra stuff, I suppose. I still think uh, Jack's boss fight was my favourite out of all of the bosses. Margaret's uh, fight was good too. Final boss was a bit reminiscent of uh, William Birkin actually from RE2 kind of. And the face thing looked a bit like Carla when she's on the ship and she's took it over from RE6. This game is like such a Frankenstein that you can't help but love it. This is a kicking ending theme, not gonna lie. Oh, they will. I mean, I've got to play 7 in order to play 8. That's kind of why I'm doing this, because I do want to play 8, but I can't play it unless I play 7 first. Because I, I'm not going to understand anything going on in 8 otherwise. Yes, I was checking out the remake not too long ago. I'm probably going to go through the OG game before I do the remake, to be honest. I've yet to stream the OG game. I'll probably do it on New Game Plus so I can get through it faster. I do like the OG game of RE4 though. The remake looks really good too though. It's going to play very differently too and that's going to be half the fun. Is seeing what, you know, what they can get out of the RE7 engine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Play them in the in the right order. I should play RE1 remake eventually as well. Or stream them, I should say. I've played them before off stream, but I just, I just haven't uh, played them or streamed them much. I've streamed a lot of the action-based ones, like five and six, Revelations one and two. Um, which what whatever one did I stream? 
can't count seven as an action-based game because it's not action-based. Your first RE game was four. I pl I started with two. Funnily enough, I never um, I never played the first one. I know a lot of people love the OG first one because of how campy and silly it is, with the voice acting and everything. But uh, I, I can't play that version these days. I, like after playing the RE one remake, I suppose you could call me spoiled. But after playing the RE one remake, uh, I can't touch the OG version. Oh, credits. I like how it ended with the Baker family in the news report at the end there. So these are my totals for what I did. Let's see what I did. I got a, obviously it was on easy. My playtime was about nine hours. <laughs> I start restarted about four times. I didn't really look for the Mr. Everywhere things. I weren't too sure what to do with them at first when I saw them. Now I know to shoot them. Um, antique coins, I'm a couple short. A few files that I missed. There's probably a couple that I didn't look for. Um, item boxes opened. I got quite a few of those. 34 Elin items. I used one stabilizer and two steroids. Not terrible. I now have Madhouse difficulty and I now have the Albert 01R. Um, those will be added to the item box. I wonder if Albert is like a reference to Wesker. Naming a hand gun after him seems kind of ironic. And there we go, we're done. We're basically on the uh, main menu again. New content has now been added. New content has been added. This content's best placed after playing the main game, which I've done. So, oh, they got like descriptions here of each DLC as well. So we've got the band footage. Secured as evidence from the Baker farm. These videotapes never saw the light of day until today. Revealed some of the tragedies suffered by the Baker's pris prisoners. So it's it's VHS tapes, but done in a DLC format. Playing as each victim, I guess. That'll be fun. I, I liked the VHS stuff in the main game. And having a bit more of that as a DLC, I kind of like that. So that'll be fun to do. Uh, not a hero. Ethan's struggle is over, but there's still one last mess to clean up. And the job falls to Chris Redfield, the veteran in the fight against the bioterrorism. <laughs> so it's just Resident Evil 5 part 3 at this point. Uh, I guess it's going to be very run and gun um, DLC. Which, uh, I'm fine with that. Running and gunning with Chris is always fun. End of Zoe. Um, weeks after Not a Hero, a new danger has emerged. Jack's brother. Ah, Jack's got a brother, huh? Joe Baker must uh, face this danger with his bare fists and put an end to his family's suffering once and for all. That's cool. So we're playing as, like, Jack's bro. And going around punching zombies, I'm assuming. Is that really just, like, Chuck Norris, the DLC? That's literally all I got from that description. It's Jack's birthday, but he's not interested in presents. It's food that he wants. Uh, find some for him as fast as you can. And then we have Ethan must die. Ethan wishes he had his mummy as you lead him to his death over and over again in the ultra high difficulty mini game. I'll definitely check these out like as a final stream for the game when I'm done. But next time I'm streaming, we'll go through the band footage. Because um, that's the one that I'm on board with the most in terms of the uh, narrative and uh, extra lore for the main game. Redfield's one will be fun. And yeah, this, this is just, you know, Jack's brother who's <laughs> just Chuck Norrising a bunch of mauled by the sounds of it. Oh, there's more here. What's the other features? Oh, just the store and the RE.net. Does this game even track your stats? It probably does, actually. 
probably sends them to like their website or whatever. I've used it for revelations too, because I keep my stats um, tracked on there, but that's mainly for raid mode, really. I think there's a stat tracker for Revelations 1 as well, but it's not as good as Revelations 2 stat tracker. It's more in, it's more in depth and more broken down in uh in Rev 2 compared to Rev 1s. It's funny actually. I played like Revelation 1's um raid mode like on my 3DS recently. And like at the time it was fine to play because like you know, I could do it while I was on the on the bus or you know or whatever. I could just play it in short bursts and it was okay. And the grinding factor weren't too bad because like you could just do it over and over again and not really care too much about it. But looking back at it compared to Revelation 2's like leveling is like it's so bad. It's so slow too. Whereas Revelations 2's like leveling system for raid is like so fast and more streamlined. It's like Capcom sat down and were like, we should like not inconvenience players and make the mode a bit more rewarding in comparison. Anyway, yeah, I had fun with Revela uh, Revelations 2, Re Resident Evil 7's uh, main game. It was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, I'll go through the DLC uh, next. I'll be going through band footage, then... You know, not a hero, end of Zoe, and then obviously I'll check out the two little modes at the end at some point as well in a separate stream, just just for funsies. And then I think to sign off with RE7 fully at that point, I'll then go through the game again, up to the decision where I have to pick either Mia or Zoe and then pick Zoe and see the other ending and uh, go through the game one last time at that point. Just to see the second ending. Right, that's uh, pretty much going to be it for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll uh, be catching you in the next one. Till then, ciao for now.